assuming the audience is familiar with the topic of today's panel, the Sustainable Development Goals. If you are, can you raise your hand? So probably about 50%. The Sustainable Development Goals were adopted by the United Nations General Assembly, so all 190 plus of the UN's member states in 2015. They set out an ambitious and necessary development agenda for the world in a whole set of different interconnected issues from climate change to gender equality, from clean energy through to anti-corruption. And it's vital that we meet those targets by 2030 if we're to secure a peaceful and prosperous world. Now, it's very easy to talk about the, the SDGs in detailed policy terms or detailed economic terms, and that often puts people off. So let me frame today's discussion with three very simple questions that I hope will resonate with all of you. The first is, what kind of world do we want to leave for future generations? And to put that more specifically, what kind of world do we want to leave for our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren? The second is, as, as business leaders, as chamber leaders, how do we want to be remembered by future generations? So we've heard at the start of the Congress about the Merchants of Peace, who founded ICC in 1919 with a real vision of how business and how the Chamber's movement could be a force for good in the world. Will we be remembered in the same way or will history judge us very differently? And the third thing after that sort of drama, if you like, and we know we face challenges that are intense and growing by the day, but in looking at those challenges, are there opportunities? Are there opportunities for the Chamber's network to redefine itself in terms of promoting sustainable economic growth? And arguably more importantly, are there opportunities for our member companies in responding to the challenges that we face locally, regionally, nationally, and globally? We have, especially since the last report on the scientific group of, known as the IPCC, uh, we have uh, information which is extremely challenging uh, because if you take what uh, we have on the table in terms of commitments by different actors and particularly by governments, uh, the world is still in a trajectory of 3.5 degrees increase by the end of the century. And that will mean extremely serious uh, consequences, negative consequences. Uh, for humans and for business, evidently, for, for the economy. We need to change that trajectory and we need to, to make an effort to keep the temperature below 1.5 degree. And the effort necessary to achieve that goal is quite uh, uh, significant. It will mean a reduction of emissions of about 45% in uh, our a little more than 10 years, uh, roughly 11 years, and we will need to get to carbon neutrality by the middle of the century. Uh, this is easy to say and difficult to achieve, but it is possible. And uh, therefore, the Secretary General has been highlighting the urgency, the crisis that we can face, we are already facing to a large extent, but at the same time, he is very much interested in finding solutions. Uh, because it's not enough to call the attention of all actors without showing what, uh, what the, the path, what the way is it. And the first uh, uh, acknowledgement is that uh, climate has been uh, the result uh, of, or has resulted in a series of uh, discussions and negotiations over many years, which uh, have re remained uh, kind of isolated from the rest of the agenda. So we need to make sure that people understand that climate is not just an environmental issue that can be dealt uh, separately. Climate is at, at the center of uh, economic policy because fighting climate change uh, implies a, a, a transformation of the economy as a whole, a transformation of the way we consume, uh, the, the, the way we produce, which is fundamental to achieve all the goals of the Sustainable Development Agenda. So we need to bring climate to the center of the discussion. 
uh, as a first point. So for Canada, we have a large role to play in sustainable development goals for the UN. In particular, how are we going to get to a low carbon economy? And that's really where this conversation started for us was as chambers, we're nonpartisan organizations who talk about business and on behalf of business, business is made up of citizens. So we decided to change the narrative and talk about sustainability as it's talked about in kitchen tables and other uh, you know, places where people speak with, with freedom. And that's where this product came from. And that's what we're campaigning on is to have that conversation changed because the world needs to have more and conversations. Whatever your situation is, it's an and conversation. We're living in a particularly polarized world where we're not listening to each other and we're not moving forward. So when Andrew asked, what are the challenges to meeting these sustainable goals? The challenge is that we're not listening and we're not talking in and, we're talking in polarization. And so as the chambers, we said, let's take it to an and conversation and let's make it about policy over politics because the politics globally are hampering us from meeting these sustainable goals. And Canada, like I say, has a real important role to play, in particular, getting to a low carbon economy. And it's not something we are not doing. We spend mil billions in innovation. We've spent $10 billion in innovation to create over 7,000 jobs. We're taking out CO2 from, we've taken out 95 million tons of CO2. This is innovation that's doing this. And so that's, that's the point of our conversation is that you can have energy development and innovation and that innovation is what is sustainability and that's how we will get to reaching the sustainability goals that the UN has put out and I really particularly like the UN Secretary's voice around it's unity that's going to get us there and so unity requires and conversations and it requires trust and that's what we're heading up with the Canadians for Natural Resources.